Evening guys and welcome to Division 2 of the Simrise Africa Volvo Namibia Cars British Touring Car Series um, Sorry that we could not live stream this tonight We ran into some light problems And had to jump over to recording it uh, Sadly missed a bit of qualifying but it's been going quite smooth at this current stage Looking at the sponsor of the event Nobody else than Michael Russ driving in a Ford Focus. You can see the Volvo branding on the car there. Um, he was kind enough to jump in and say, hey, well, I want to help you guys out. You're doing a good job. And uh, being in motorsport, as far as I've known him, he has always been Mr. Nice Guy and really appreciate the efforts he's put in. Um, started sim racing about three weeks back and he's really come from strength to strength getting onto pace currently we see him qualified in sixth a little, little bit of a shunt there from looks like Ricardo Tefani but Michael putting in some good clean laps currently the pole sitter Kyle Lawrence in an alpha sadly just missed him it is the end of qualifying so they will start pulling over now Sean Lurero one of the guys from TTSA in the Mike's place Toyota Corolla he is Actually a Division 1 driver, always very quick, very smooth, very clean driver. Couldn't make the qualifiers and he is in Division 2 tonight, which in a way is a good thing, but he doesn't score full points. He only gets 75% of the points. So he will do have to do really good to move back into Division 1. Now all the cars tonight are running 100 kilograms ballast. Um, and then according to the championship standings, they will be reduced in five kilogram in in increments to make it a bit more even and for the slower drivers to get a chance to run up with the front runners and believe me having driven one of these cars on sunday they are hard to drive with that much weight in it see them having finished now the session um, we do have kyle lawrence then taking pole position sean lurero in second adrian lecoq the only bmw driver in the field Having not been racing for a couple of weeks, I guess, um, but he's back in the seat, always fast, not that consistent always, but he's gone into third place. Calvin Greenwell, one of the newer guys, he qualified in fourth position. Then we have Zander Roots in fifth, also quite a familiar name on sub racing. Gavin Fleming, son of our regular commentator, Gary Fleming, coming in in sixth. Michael Rust sadly dropping down to 7th in the last couple of seconds. Karu Tafani, he comes in in 8th. Charles Randall, he's in 9th. Billy Moss in 10th. And Johan Niemann, usually a very, very quick guy. And since he's gotten onto his new wheel, he has been the quickest on the practice servers. Only managed 11th. So I think he must, he must, must have had some problems or something. 18 seconds to go, the guys will go onto the grid. Um, so let's see if we can get Kyle in here. Hopefully, he can talk to us. That doesn't seem to get hold of him. Let's see if we can get Michael in here. Uh, Michael, can you hear us? Michael, are you there? Nope, that's not like he wants to talk to us either. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Sorry for that, Michael. Can you hear me now? Michael, you there? Yes. Hello. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, well, we just you just finished qualifying. You got it into seventh place, dropping down just in the last seconds behind Gavin. How's the car feeling? How's the track feeling? Uh, well, with uh, Melvin's help, obviously your help uh, last night a bit, uh, we got a lot faster than what we were previously. So, yeah, we'll see. We've got a lot of fuel on board now, so let's go. The track feels nice. I think these guys are extremely fast, so... Let's see where we get to today. Uh, just a quick word before the pace car pulls away. Um, 
just tell the people that you got in, you have got involved as a sponsor through vo by means of Volvo Cars Namibia. Um, to anyone watching the the recording of the race, in your personal opinion, having driven almost every kind of race and rally car there is to drive, how close does this come come to the real thing? Is it worth getting? What advice can you give to to avid admirers out there? To be very honest with you, uh, this is a lot closer and a lot more realistic than what anybody thinks looking at it. It is really, you know, you get sweaty palms and all of that like you would do with normal. Really something worth getting into. Well, I'm going to let you leave you to it. Uh, enjoy the race, warm up your tyres. It all starts in a couple of seconds. Enjoy, Michael. Thank you. Guys, there you have it from the sponsor himself, Michael, saying that it is a lot more realistic than what it looks like. And uh, oh yeah, let me just quickly get my camera car out of the way. So the car is out of the way, standing in the pits there, drop back to what he's doing. Here's in the white Volvo XC90 pace car, you can see Carl Lawrence following Sean Herrera in third place, Adrian Lecoq in fourth, Gavin Greenville warming up the tyres in the red Audi. Try and see if we can get into one of the cars. I think an interesting driver to watch will definitely be that of Adrian Lecoq in the only rear wheel drive car out there. It is heavily loaded, so he is a quick driver but does tend to run a couple of incidents every now and then. This car is actually quite forgiving with, with a bit of argy bargy normally on the set, the slight little steps will send you off track. But these cars are quite forgiving, which has its advantage and disadvantages, and uh, in the fact that the guys tend to bump each other a bit more. Okay, we see them lining up. Everybody getting ready. We are up into with uh, Adrian Lecoq then, one of the Namibian guys, following closely behind Sean. Now the Ford is faster than the Corolla, but the Corolla does have better handling. The Alpha, probably the quickest car out there, is going to be hard to beat, so let's see what happens. And they're off. Pulse of the car, Rollins putting in pace. You can see Adrian pushing really, really hard there, trying to get close. Seems like they do get a clean start there. We'll drop to the TV cameras. We see them coming through into turn one. As they go, go through red gate, Adrian Lecoq keeps it steady. Followed closely by Calvin Treadwell. Oh, and we have one of the drivers off. It seems like it might be Ricardo Tefani. It's Ricardo Tefani who sadly ran white there. Billy Moss in the orange focus on track, running in 10th place. We go up to Zander Roots in the Alfa Romeo. He's chasing hard, following Calvin Greenwell. And still, it seems like Carl Lawrence is pulling away slightly, but Sean is coming coming with him. Now, Sean is one of the, one of the Group A drivers. He is really, really quick. And he will not back down, I can assure you, he is going to go for a move very, very soon. And we see him lining up on the inside. There's a hard chicane coming coming up in Division 1. We had plenty of cuts here. They won't be able to do that tonight as they will get penalties. Sean trying to get the better drive out of the corner. Alpha just has the H&M. Oh, and we see Adrian Lacock running wide. That was what I was talking about, the rear-wheel drive. It is not the easiest car to drive. It is quick, but it is handful. Coming to turn one again, Sean looking for a move up the inside. He is still getting there and in third place we now see Calvin Grenville. He's fallen back, but here's a dice for second. Oh, and it's Lacock and Roots. Lacock and Roots getting together. Lacock going sideways. He gets bumped from behind by Roots. I wouldn't say it was really a bump. Roots was trying to avoid him as Lacock went into a slide. He goes off into the grass. This will allow Greenville to, to catch right up. But Roots one of the faster drivers and he will most probably pull away again. Gonna try and see where Adrian rejoins. He has rejoined now in fifth place, it seems. 
no, he's gone down to sixth place behind Kevin Fleming. As he does on the inside, this BMW really is fast on the straights. I mean, the MA in Otto is colors from Namibia. Will he make the move on the inside? No, he does not pull it off. Michael Rust, who has gone to the pits, not sure what happened there. We will have to have a talk with him later. Seems like he is standing in the pits there, which is a pity. Um, the old cots are one of our new guys in the Ford Focus, um, joining tonight for the first time. Just putting in the laps, it all comes with experience. Um, trying to be right out fast as the it just never works out. Um, yeah, you can see him struggling a bit. This track is really difficult to drive. The cars do tend to understeer a lot, as was seen there. So we see Sean Lurero has taken the lead. And he has, so there must have been another incident, as we see Carl Lawrence has fallen into the hands of Zander Roots. As I said earlier, Zander Roots is really quick. So let's see if he can make any kind of move on Carl Lawrence here. We drop back to Zander Roots. Both Alphas, both cars very, very quick as they go through the chicane. If you cut this, you do get a track penalty. Does not seem like he is able to catch him unless Kyle is going to make a mistake here. I do not think he is going to make it easy for Zonda. Zonda having a bit of a better line there as they exit out the corner. But it seems Kyle's got the better pull away out of it. Go to the top. We can see these three cars. They are pretty much keeping their distances. Not really a lot happening there. And all of a sudden we have two cars. The pit star Ricardo Tufani also having retired. It's another pit team. We do not have all the guys who show tonight. Um, it's really sad, but they all did have excuses. And let's fall back with the action. Let's see Gavin Fleming and Arden Lecoq seems to be in a quite close battle. The Audi with front wheel drive. Does seem to have a bit of an advantage through the corners as they come on to Starkey Straight. Adrian again looking into the inside, but it, it looks as if the Ori might have the legs on the straight. He has to dive back into position again. I think for this, for now, we'll stick with this fight as I know these guys are pushing really, really hard. Gavin was sitting, setting up the car the whole day. Adrian sat last night. Oh, and that was the penalty I was talking about, guys. When you try to cut the track too much, it picks up, you've had more than three wheels off and you get a time penalty where you need to lift off the throttle, otherwise it will disqualify you. That has caused Adrian to fall back right behind Johan Niemann. Now Johan Niemann was quickest in practice, um, he started last, he is up to sixth place, so he is definitely making up ground. Um, sadly I can't say the lap times, I'm trying to see if I can get it somewhere. But he is easily pulling away from Adria now. Charles Randall running in a very, very good 8th place in the GB truck and body Australia Toyota. Um, he's also one of our newcomers, also one of the admin guys, so he spends more time doing work behind the scenes in actual racing. And uh, at this stage he's driving, his rig was sent in for rebuild and he's driving with a, with a desk chair and a table. And having to concentrate more to keep the pedals at bay than to actually drive the car. But not doing a bad job at all running in, in, in 8th place. That is some good points that, that will, he will get. Billy Moss, another one of our fathers in, in the group. Um, son Tommy Leary did very well on Sunday in Division 1. He's currently running in 9th. He was planning on driving with a new Logitech tonight, but they are having some problems with it, so he's still on the old wheel. And it is a bit of a struggle to drive with that wheel. Um, as I've understood, so keeping it on track and running in the position he is, is, is an awesome job. Again, good points up for grabs. Sean Lurero is just pulling away at this stage. They have done seven laps, they've got seven minutes remaining. Now at this stage, usually the tyres start to wear off. We have seen that the focus actually does tend to pick off to its tyre, as does the Toyota, but in the Alpha and the Ori, they tend to eat the tires away. 
As Sean comes in for yet another lap. Carl Lawrence, oh, he's run wide. That is going to open the door and there's contact. And oh no, there is a lot of contact. Kyle Lawrence then getting taken out by Thunder Roots. Um, yeah, that is a pretty bad one. According to the rules, Thunder should have waited for Kyle. But that will definitely be something the stewards will be looking at. Um, there might be more to what, what we just see. Sudden drop of speed. Thunder might not have had the time to stop in time. But okay, he's kept going. He's keeping his head up held up high and he is pushing. As I said, these alphas are quick. So he might just make up the little time he's lost. In the background we see Gavin Fleming. Right there, if another mistake is going to happen, he's definitely going to be right up there to catch him. Only three seconds. Oh, and he's gone off. That is not going to help him in his quest to catch him. Guess that was commentator's curse. So if we look at this, Calvin who has closed up right with Zander Roots now. Will he be able to catch up? Will he be able to pass? Not so sure. Let's see. The Alpha, as I said, on the straight does about 10 kilometers an hour quicker. Um... So the Audi really has to work hard in the corners to make up and that burns the tires, so we're gonna stick with these guys, see what happens. Calvin Grenfell then pushing really hard trying to catch the Alpha of Zander Ritz. As they head down through Hollywood, then into the Craner curves. You can cut this one just right, you can gain a lot of time. Slightly increasing, he's pulled about 0.2 seconds now from the start of the lap. And it does seem as if Kyle is catching up, he's closed that gap to about 2.2, 2.3 seconds now. So, as we go through the rest of the field, Gavin Fleming had another off, has allowed Adrian Lecoq to catch up again. I do not know how the BMW stars are holding out. Um, but he is quickly, quickly catching up to Gavin. So I wonder if the Audi's tires hasn't run down. We saw that in Division 1 on Sunday. Once they go, they let go quickly. And he is really catching up quick. Under braking through the corner, you can see Adrian is pushing it now. He is hunting down that fifth position. Then in turn in seventh place, Johan Niemann also catching up. So we've got two three cars battle at this stage between Zander Roots, Gavin. Calvin Greenville and Kyle Lawrence for 2nd, 3rd and 4th then 5th, 6th and 7th the guys on top of each other see if Adrian can pull some sort of move through the Craner curves here go into the right hander definitely catching up it seems like Gavin is definitely struggling and all of this is allowing Niemann to catch right up um, so oh and again Gavin goes off track Adrian going to the inside of him surely he has them yeah he has them the line there he takes it on the inside is Gavin, Gavin going to try and outbreak him at the end of the straight the Audi we have seen is quick on the straight what will he do in the slips him he goes oh and Adrian is covering his line he's covering this might be too quick as they go through the corner they're getting clean through the Audi coming. Better run out of the corner. I hope he didn't get a penalty there. And all the while, Johan Niemand waiting there. All the slightest mistakes, and he will pick up two places in these cars. It happens so quickly. Looking at the front, that gap is remaining the same. So we're going to watch this battle for for the while. See them coming through. They've just gone past again. Gavin. Looking for a way past. Oh, almost losing it there. Adrian Lecoq, that has cost him some ground. That's going to allow Johan Niemann to cut into the inside. Will he have the momentum to pull him through? Can he do it? The Alpha really quick on the straights. Yes, he is going for it. He's got the inside line. As they go through McLean's, it is Johan Niemann who then snatches the position from Gavin Fleming. He goes into sixth place, and I can promise you he's got his set eyes set now on. Adrian Lecoq. Gavin definitely struggling with tire issues, couple of mistakes, and that has lost him two positions now. Sean Lurero pulling far, far away at this current stage. He is 
11 seconds ahead with two minutes to go plus one lap. Zander Roots is keeping that gap to Calvin. It's gone down a bit to 0 0.5. Does, does he have less tires left? Is Zander starting to struggle with, with tire wear? Is, has Calvin saved his tires? Difficult to say. The gap is, is more or less staying the same. Kyle Lawrence is dropped about 2.5 seconds, so he's just basically, I think, running now for the points. Adrian Lecoq has quickly pulled away, so I don't know if something happened. The Gavin Fleming has disappeared at this stage. He's lost a lot of ground. Um, he's actually fallen into the hands of, of Charles Randall. As I said, the Corolla comes into its own on the last couple of minutes as the tires on the seat just does not seem to wear so fast. So if Gavin is struggling, I, it's pretty much a done deal for, for Charles if he can keep it clean, keep it on the road. A uh, bit of curb popping there, but he seems good. Yeah, the Toyota has got a completely different sound to the Audis. Still trying to catch Adrian. Adrian now up into fifth place. At this stage, I think not much happening with with regard to positions. Would be interesting to hear why Michael Ross retired. Don't know if he's got wheel problems. I know last night he did struggle with his pedals, and I think he opened it today. So I hope he didn't break something. I see Charles Randall now also in pit. Not sure what happened there. It might be that I had a corner cut and got disqualified. And if we look, it doesn't tell us if they were disqualified, but we'll have a chat with him as soon as the race is done. Sean Lorello coming down Starkey straight. It's going to be a 50 50 as to whether this is the last lap. He's got seven laps remaining. Will he cross the finish line before that ends? This might have an effect on the fuel as well. No, he is in the final lap. So Sean Lurero started from second, got the lead, and has just gone his own way. Currently leading with nine, eight, nine, eight seconds. Cap is falling a bit, so it might be that he is slowing down. Might be fuel, but he's, he's got a he's got a strong lead. So if he doesn't run out of fuel and make a big mistake, he's got it in the back. He will be winning Division Two, race one. For sure. Thunder Roots currently in second place. He is maintaining that gap from Calvin Greenwell. Um, and Kyle Lord is just about hanging on. So also not with the amount of time left. I think we're looking at second and third place here. Fourth place will then be Kyle Lawrence. Adrian Lecoq. He has got Johan Niemann just doesn't seem to be able to close that gap it does seem to be slightly faster but i don't think he'll have enough time um as we cross over it is sean Lurero who crosses the line in first he takes victory nobody was able to catch him we actually did predict this he is one hell of a fast driver and a good driver thunder roots coming in second closely closely followed there by calvin grenville in the red audi Kyle Lawrence coming through in fourth. Let's go. Adrian Lecoq, who does actually manage to stay in fifth, then with Jan Niemann very, very close behind him. Gavin Fleming had such a good run. Sadly, I think his tire just completely wore out, and he will then be crossing the line in seventh. Billy Moss, good, solid race. And it seems like his sound has gone. <laughs> okay, it seems like we did sound at this stage. Might be with the end that end race end of the race. Okay, so we're gonna start, try and see if we can get Sean Herrera in here. What he has to say there. Sean, are you with us? Hello. Well done on the first race, buddy. Yeah. How did it go? It seemed like you had it all in the back. You weren't really pushing hard, or were you, were you pushing it hard? How was the tyres? Give us a bit of imp input. Sean, you there? 
Sean, can you hear us? Yeah. Did Sorry, man. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, well, you just won the first race, I mean, by a country mile. So give us a bit of input. How did it go? How did the car feel? Uh, it got better as it got lighter. So that much fuel, this car is quite uh, heavy. And uh, so that's why on the second last lap, I said the quickest time. So all in all, uh, pretty good. I'm not sure what happened to Carl and them, but um, they seem to be having some good fights in the back there. Yeah, so there, there was a couple of good battles. Um, with the grid inverted now, you will be starting in eighth. Eighth, you're going to try and repeat it, or you're going to play it safe. Uh, let's go. <laughs> we can do it. Okay, buddy. Enjoy and have fun, and let's see you on the podium. Thank you very much. So there you have it. One of the first race, always Mr. Happy Guy. Always a quick driver, a very, very brilliant driver to race against. And uh, as he said, bring on the battle. So they have got about 43 seconds before we will go to the inverted grid. Still, all the cars will be on 100 kilograms, making them difficult to drive. Changes will take place after this opening round. Um, this will be inverted grid, so the top eight will now be inverted, meaning that Sean Lurero will start from 8th and Willy Moss who came home in 8th will then be in 1st place. So it is a tendency that the faster guys get a bit nervous, believe it or not, and they tend to mess it up a bit. So it should be an interesting race to, to, to watch here. Hopefully it's incident free. First race went pretty well. One or two nudges there, but that's racing. And in these cars, as close as they are with the white penalties. It makes it quite interesting. Okay, we're gonna cross over. We see Mr. Warwick Stewart there in this time a black Volvo getting ready to do the right lap with the guys. Volvo cars Namibia bringing all this to you um, all the way from Namibia. Thanks to Michael Rust. Sadly, he didn't finish race one. I can only think that he did get a disqualification for a corner cut. Uh, if you do not play that right, it will really bite you, and I think that might have been the position. So they've got a couple of seconds to go, uh, 15 seconds to be exact. You're going to drop back and see who is starting where. So Johan Niemand will then actually start in pole. Adrian Lecoq start in second. Thunder Roots in third. Kyle Lawrence will start from fourth place. Calvin Greenwell fifth. Sean Lurero in 6. Okay, so it's the top 6 that was inverted. Of course, they were less cars. Michael Russ then having to start from the back as he did not get to start the race. We will then... Oh, and it seems Warwick is having a bit of internet issues as the safety car is bouncing all over the track. Let me just get my car back to pits. We see Michael Rust in the sadly for a very bad race in race one. Charles Randall didn't have time to get him in, but we have a couple of minutes after the event to get these guys in, ask them what exactly happened there. Charles having such a good run and then somehow it all went upside down. Devil Costu was disconnected, I see his back, which is good to see. Billy Moss in there, I think he is the oldest man in this race actually. Gavin Fleming, his dad, Gary Fleming usually does the commentating. Unable to attend tonight as he has got another commentating job to do, but he was practicing today and his times was really, really good. So next time round, it'll be interesting to see. Here we see the guy we just talked about, son of Gary Fleming, Gavin Fleming. Also had a pretty good run. Didn't work out towards the end. I think his tires did wear down quite quick. Sean Lurero, as he said, as the car got lighter, oh, and we see one X2 with the pace car driver has disconnected. That is not a problem with the Volvo guys, I can assure you that they do not break. That was Warwick's internet that just broke. Um, he did complain from some issues tonight, so one of the reasons we could not stream to you, but it's it, South Africa, it happens. So we see the guys line up. Out of interest, they, we're going to go with Sean Lurero, sit with him in the car, watch the restart as he will be right up there with the pack. 
get a bird's eye view of what it has to go through to get through these guys. Um, Johan Niemann, very clean driver, out in the cock, quick but quite aggressive. Zander Roots, Kevin Greenville, Lyle Lawrence, all of them quick drivers. They will not back off his uh, position easily, so let's see what happens. As they start to line up, they will now go to, as soon as the pole to the field is ready, he will be going. As they come onto Wickroft straight, and it's a green, green, green. Gavin Fleming then, nudging. And they're off. As we go in car with Sean Lurera, let's see what happens. So it's Sean who is in seventh place. He did drop a place to Gavin Fleming, who hey, was a fly little fox. Old other track racer, he knows how to read a, read a start. Sean has got his work cut out. At this stage, we see you on Johan Niemann. He was the fastest guy in practice, so it might be that he played the strategy game here. He is currently leading, and he is definitely pulling away. Then we have a four-car dice there with Adrian Lecoq, Kyle Lawrence, Zander Roots. All of them in a battle for second there. And it's Kyle Lawrence who's currently in second, Adrian Lecoq in third, Cal Calvin Greville in fourth, and Zander Roots right up there in fifth. Now with their tussle, this has allowed Sean to come in. Michael Rust also up there, so making a move on Gavin Fleming. He is going to go for the inside, let's see what he can do. Michael Rust then going for an outbreak. Does he pull? Oh no, that will be a penalty. He will have to slow down or he will get another disqualification. I hope he did not get a penalty, or if he did, he realizes. We will see now as he crosses the line. He seems to be okay. As they go into the corner there, Gavin Fleming then cutting off Michael. He's hard chasing his under roots. It does seem that all of is really, really strong at the beginning of the race. Then as the tires go, it's, it falls away very, very quick. Oh, and Gavin has gone wide. Gavin Fleming has gone wide onto the gravel. That will cost him dearly. They do not like rally cross, Gavin. Adrian Lecoq then. They haven't taken the lead. We will have to check there what happened with Johan Niemann. Sadly, we were watching that other battle and off when this happened. But it seems Johan Niemann has dropped a lot of places. So we will have to look into what happened there. So now it's Mr. Sean Lurero all the way from 7th place, fighting for the lead. He goes outside, Adrian Lecoq covering his line. He is not an easy customer. Let's see what happens. That seems like he has the edge. Is Sean going to pull it off? No, he would not. He would, he's trying to. He's keeping it on the outside. He's gonna go for it. If he can stay there, he will be taking the lead. And he takes it on the outside. He passes Adrian Lecoq as they go into the Craner curves. It's Sean Lerero in the lead, followed by Adrian Lecoq in the Autos, Emma and Track and Bus BMW. In third place, it's now Mr. Zander Roots. He seems to have settled in the good rhythm. He's now chasing Adrian Lecoq. Sadly, race leader Johan Niemann, not sure what happened there, but we will find out very soon though. Calvin Greenville in the red and black Audi, running in fourth. He is falling away, but Michael Rust, who seems to be carrying good speed, looks like he's catching up. And Charles Randall, Charles Randall in sixth place. He is really doing very, very well tonight. Um, Really pushing the TH, you can see the nose dive running over the curbs. Really doing an excellent job in that number 223 car. If we look at Johan Niemann chasing out, something has happened. He was in the lead, he lost it somehow, dropped all the way back to seventh, and has to do it all over again. Shaldi running wide, this will give Johan time to possibly get back into the lead. We're going to go back to Adrian Lecoq, who's now being chased hard by Zander Roots. Again, the Alpha is coming into its, on, into its own on the back straight, but the BMW, as I've heard, is also very quick on the straight. So let's see if Adrian can keep this position. Roots then going on the inside. Oh, and Andreas chants him, and in the rear wheel drive. Will it? Yes, he holds on very well healthy. 
Nice sideways action there, throwing lights, not happy about that move at all. Blocking the Ori not to pass him. That would have cost him more time as the Ori will now have a better run and Calvin Grenville will be able to pass him. Um, for some reason Adrian quite unhappy and flashing his lights, but that that was yeah, it, it was a 50-50 thing from both drivers. Calvin then on the inside as they go down with for with straight game in for the end of lap well actually it doesn't show me the lap sorry guys <laughs> they've got nine minutes remaining Adrian now on the inside with the Audi hard 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 on his heels um Calvin drive, doing an impressive drive here to keep up with Adrian as I said before Adrian a very quick driver but does tend to make some mistakes sometimes and that was one of them again going a bit wide you do not want to do that in the rear wheel drive now the tussle between these two Michael Rust has slipped up another place as Johan once again has gone off so Johan really struggling tonight um, don't know if he's still getting used to the wheel driving in traffic now but the tussle between Adrian Nell and Calvin Greenville has allowed Michael Rust to catch right up to them so we are going to have a three-way dice now for third place and Charles Randall is going to be right there and we see Johan Niemann going for a move on Charles Randall as they go in Johan has pulled it off again the speed of the Alpha oh and Michael no Michael got a penalty he broke that is a terrible he was scared after this qualification from race one Johan had nowhere to go oh that is that is yeah that is something that you do not want to happen um, Michael who backed off for penalty Johan was on the move hit him right in the back there as we go back Sean Herrera now with a 2.2 second lead it does seem as if Zander Roots does actually keep up this time round Sean got to the lead very quick and now it seems like Zander Roots is keeping right up there Adrian Lecoq another five seconds back behind Zander Roots with Calvin Grenville about a second behind him now so it does seem again as we hit the seven minute mark the Audi seems to fall away a bit so I think the Audi's tires are wearing away faster even though it's quick in the corners um, Adrian slowly but surely pulling away then from Calvin Charles Randall who has now after all that incident kept his head clear he's gone up into fifth place I think he would be pretty delighted with that sadly he didn't finish race one but he is having a brilliant race here in race two Kyle Lawrence then in the Alpha running in sixth place so I'm not too sure what happened there Devald got the first race with SRA running in seventh followed by Gavin Fleming again there you can see the Audi just understeers immensely right from the seven minute mark it seems as if the tires start to go don't know if it's set up or if it's the car itself cause on Sunday we had the Audi's win race to one and two with Warwick Stewart and Peter Grobler so it might be purely set up or driving style but you can clearly see Gavin struggling to keep the car to turn in Michael Rust after that unfortunate incident got a penalty slowed down got hit by Jan who had nowhere to go Jan obviously not not a happy chappy tonight he is really struggling things just hasn't got his way and we see Charles Randall stopping there not sure what happened stopping the right mid track as he pulls off might be those pedals that I told you about early tonight um, as Johan goes for a move he cuts on the inside he takes the position from Michael that will put him back up to eighth place does get some points Michael is still pushing looks like him he will not have the legs to pull it off but let's see on corner exit he was really quick here uh, it seems like he has unsettled the Ford. a lot of steering input there through the corner So at this stage just need to restart the ace remote sorry guys so again just a 
catch up. Sean Lurera leading then. Zander Roots running in second. He's still maintaining the gap at 2.5 seconds. Or oh, Sean is maintaining the gap at 2.5 seconds. Saving the car, saving the field, saving the tyres, having a clean run. He said on in the interview after race one, bring it on, and he has brought it on. Calvin Grenwell then running in third place. He has actually got past Adrian Lecoq, so either he made a mistake or something happened, but he was right there to make the move, so let's see if Adrian can make any moves back on him. At this stage, we're going to stick with those dice as, oh, and Adrian, that's the problem with the rear wheel drive. If you're not quick, you're going to lose it. Touch the grass, spun off. That will cost him dearly as he try, he's trying to get back onto track. I hope he rejoins safe as he pulls off there. This will obviously allow Kyle Lawrence to catch right up to him. Adrian staying in fourth position though, so still some good points up there for him. But this will allow Kyle Lawrence to come right up to him. Niemann then having fought his way back up to 7th. Michael Russ seems to be struggling with tyres now as he's slowly but surely falling away. You can see the steering input on the front wheels is he's pretty much a lot than there. You can see he's putting a lot of steering to turn that car in. So definitely the front tyres are worn or in that incident he bent something on the car. He really needs to turn that wheel a lot. I mean that's almost full lock just to try and get it turned in. So he's having a harder time there. Gavin Fleming also tonight is quick in the beginning and it seems like his setup is just eating up the tires. Tries to turn in, he just goes straight on. But he was sitting in a temp comfortable 10th position. He said earlier to me today that he can't wait for his new wheel to be sorted. They are having a teething problem with it. Hopefully son Tommy can sort it tonight. So as we go back, Sean Loretta. He's opened up a bit, he's opened it up to 4 seconds actually, so he is starting to push it now. He is really starting to, he just did a 110.7, so he's back into the 110s. Really comfortable with the car now and really pushing it hard. So you see, Zander Roots in second, only 111.2, so that's half a second that he lost in, in that one lap. Um, Calvin Greenwell, all is only third now, 2 minutes remaining. Again, if there's no mistakes here, this is probably how they will be ending. Adrian Lecoq in fourth. Calvin seems to be making up a bit of ground, but not much. Not much. And it seems also Adrian might be having a bit of lag there, which can be frustrating and that might allow to catch up to him. The Alpha, as I said, really quick on the straight, but the BMW as well is not that slow. Look at the steering inputs, they both still seem okay. Audrey on the car doesn't seem nervous. That should be an interesting battle to see how this goes. We'll quickly drop through the rest of the field and get back to these guys. We have Devil Kotsa and Johan Niemann. Now Johan Niemann trying to fight his way back. So he's right up there with Devald Kotzer. Kyle Lawrence has now closed the gap to less than a second to Adrian. Now Le Lecoq really, sorry I said Lanel, no, it's actually Lecoq. <laughs> um, as they go through the right hand, uh, Kyle Lawrence really, really pushing it now. So with one minute to go, they will most probably still have two laps to go. And look at the battles, it is Adrian Lecoq coming into the chicanes at Roberts. Then right behind them we have the battle between Johan Niemand and Devald Kotsu. He's trying to make a position, we'll see them in the background there. It seems like Johan might have that move in place now. They come down the straight, Devald's really doing good to keep Johan behind him. Coming down Wheatcroft straight as they turn into Redgate. Johan is keeping it clean. He does seem faster, but he is not able to pass Devald Kotze at this stage. Again, the gap remains about a second. Gavin Fleming again has caught up right to Michael Rust. 
So there's also less than a second gap between these guys. And again, you can see the steering input by Michael is just immense. He is really struggling with those front tires. He can't get turned in. He runs wide there. This allows Gavin Fleming to put his nose on the inside. Can he pull it out on the outside? He turns in. Michael keeps his... He just he has to lift off. He's got no way to stop any car. He must have picked up damage from that incident through the Robert Chicanes. Gavin making an easy pass heading there. And the Ford does seem to be injured a lot. Shaw, well, sadly having retired, I think that might be something with his steering wheel setup as he's not driving on his rig and has the pedals moving around. Sean Herrera leading with 13 seconds after 15 minutes. So that's about a second a lap. Really pushing that Mike's place Toyota now. Running away for the TTS 18. Uh, teammates definitely going to be happy. They've actually got four TTSA, five TTSA drivers in here. And Sean clearly doing the best of the best in this event tonight. Grabbing the points, getting some points together. Second place, done the roots now, still maintaining the gap at about two seconds between him and Calvin Greenwell. So he's, he's more or less got that one settled with Sean Lurero just starting the final lap. Adrian Lecoq then has got Kyle Lawrence all over him. 0.5 seconds in it. Lecoq's last lap was a 1.11.3, so we can see what he does now as they cross the line. He does a 1.11.6. Kyle right, right up his rear bumper as they go into red guy turn one. Onto the grass, but he keeps it clean. BMW seems to have a better run on the Alpha through there as they go through Craner curves. Again, the Alpha catching right up through there. Through the old hairpin. They start to go uphill. Does the BMW have more power? Does the Alpha have more power? Through Starkey's Bridge. They go through the Swans curve and then the McLean's right hander. Seems like Adrian might be struggling with a bit of understeer. Again, look at the steering input as they go through there. A lot more than the Alpha is getting. Slight corner cut there, but it's okay. Jan Niemand in the other in the other side is still in seventh place. He can't seem to get he's actually dropped back from, from the Evolt Kotze. So he was the quickest quickest guy in practice, they had a terrible time in qualifying, didn't have a good race 1 and really struggling in race 2, so I'm not sure if he changed anything on the car or if when he put in fuel the car changed completely, um, as it was already overweighted, but Johan really really struggling tonight, sadly though because he was very quick. See Sean Lurero then, having won the race I was watching so much at the other stuff that I missed that one, but again, Sean Lurero taking overall victory for the evening. Zander is coming home in second place. Calvin Grenville in third, followed by Arjun Lecoq in fourth, Kyle Lawrence in fifth, Devald Kotze in a tremendous sixth place. See the guys already locking off. So, yeah, that was actually. It was a clean race, there was a couple of incidents. Um, Pretty sure the clock of the course will be looking at this, she will be looking at the footage. Um, sad though for Michael Rust, we're going to try and get some of the guys, these guys into the chat, have a chat with him. Let's try and see if we can get Johan in here. Hi Johan, can you hear us? Uh, Johan, are you there? Yes, this is all. Jan, we were watching your stream now, and well, it it's it went all very very good in practice, but the racing itself just went horrible for you. Uh, what happened? Give explain to us. I mean, it it wasn't your night tonight, obviously. Yes, it was a bit of a difficult one. Uh, before the first race, I started having issues with the internet. Tried three different uh, service providers that we've got, and uh, the ping just been sky high with everything. Um, but I made to start the race and uh, fight my position back up to number six. 
On the second race, in the second corner, me and Sean are coming together and I went off. Then I had to fight back again, uh, managed to do quite well up until six, when I ran into somebody that uh, had a cut penalty. Um, yeah, that, that's racing. It's, uh, it's a battle always. We saw that, yeah. We were actually watching that when it happened and following you, trying to battle through the field. With your new wheel, the speed is definitely there. You're looking forward to the, re the rest of the season? Yes, I'm looking forward. I'm very excited. Hopefully soon we'll see you and Sun Johan Niemann battling for position in the two alphas. That should be pretty awesome, I think. That will be great, yes. Well, Johan, thanks for joining. I'm going to try and get a couple of other guys in here to hear what their thoughts are. Thanks for joining. Hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, bad luck this time around. Better luck next, next time, but... I hope so. Let's try and hear from the sponsor himself what he has to say. Mr. Michael Rust. Can you hear us, Michael? Smell us. Not a good night for you tonight. The times were there. Race one, did you have a disqualification? Uh, I, I actually did. Uh, I took a bit of avoiding action. Uh, two guys in front of me are coming together uh, at the chicane. Um, so the read it as I cut the chicane and then you know, the, the start finishes on the straight bar after that. And by the time I read the, the warning... You were um, over the I, line. I was over the line, so it disqualified me. Sure. Yeah. And then, yeah, and in the second race, I had a bit of a slip up. <laughs> I slipped off the accelerator pedal and guy hit me from behind. And I caused a bit of a pile up. Yeah, we saw... I apologize we, for that. But, we, um, we saw that when they actually thought it was a cut penalty, but yeah. Um, that's racing, it happens. It seems like after that you really had a good pace and after that, looking at the video footage while we were following you, you had to give a lot of turn in. So it seems like something was bent on the car because you had no steering whatsoever. Yeah, now after that accident, there was the car didn't handle it all. Um, strange how you feel it, you know, if you say you can see it from outside. Uh, in the car, it felt absolutely terrible. You know, I couldn't brake where I used to brake. When you accelerate through those long sweeps, it just, you know, it just picks up wheel spin and it doesn't go anywhere. So after that accident, it wasn't nice driving the car anymore. At least you finished, you got some points up on the board. Um, definitely some weights being removed from your car, which should make it a bit more user-friendly next time around. Yes, definitely. But, yeah, that's a good thing. You guys, you guys really did a good... Um, think tank organizing this event you know with the weights that, that keeps everybody at the same level at the end of the day i think division one and two qualifying on a different track made it a bit um difficult for the guys some guys should have been in division one i think that were in division two yeah. and maybe the other way around but that's all sorted now i mean next race uh, everybody should be in the places where they where they should actually be driving uh, it might still be a bit up and down but uh, it's going to make it the more interesting and as the championship plays out I can pretty much assure the viewers that it's just going to get closer and closer because a slower guy is going to be in a very light car where a driver like Sean Herrera is going to be an extremely heavy car and that yes. will make it very difficult for him to to pull away like he did tonight winning with over 15 seconds yes now definitely look at uh, the weight on this car definitely makes a big issue you know especially when it's a 15 minute race um you know, the weight does take it out of your tires and everything. And then by the time that you're light enough, then you don't have tires left. So, uh, yes, the guys with the weights will really struggle with their cars. Well, Michael, I thank you once again. Again, thank you to Volvo Cars Namibia making this possible for us to run these events. Um, your commitment being here every night, sitting with us till late hours, talking crap, having fun, practicing, and in between organizing stuff. Um, from here on, let's, let, let's see what happens. Go bigger and just go forward. Thanks a lot. No, thanks, guys, for the organization, everybody involved behind the scenes. Uh, it's only a pleasure being a, um, geared up with you guys, um, and we'll definitely make it bigger and better in the future. Thanks, Michael. Speak to you in a bit. Right. Yeah. Well, we've got our own co-organizer and founder here with us in the studio as well. Warwick, you were quiet all race. Um, sadly, you had to disconnect, but racing in itself tonight was pretty clean. Uh, what's your thoughts on the event itself? 
Oh, followed race one quite closely. I was obviously following as you were commentating. Um, racing looked quite good, looked nice and close. Obviously, Sean running away with it a little bit at the end. Um, obviously, race two had a little bit of internet problems, so I disconnected just for safety due to my ping being quite high. Um, but yeah, all in all, I say brilliantly organized. Thanks to Volvo Cars Namibia for the sponsor and everything. And yeah, there's a lot, a lot more racing to come that I think is going to be absolutely amazing. Just a, another thought from your side. Um, as you said now, Sean Lurie running away with it. You think the penalties, you, you're driving the Ori, I'm in the Toyota. And we've seen it tonight again. Um, I said it before the race. The Toyota does seem to carry its tires better. The Ori again tonight at seven minutes, it seems to have fallen away. Do you think that's the effect of the weights or just purely the track? Or is it the car setups? You having, I mean, on Sunday night, you won race two, I think. Um, on Sunday evening, I actually took second place. Um, my honest opinion, I think it comes down to set up. The guys are obviously going very aggressive on their canvas, to obviously, to try to get the cars to turn in. Um, my personal opinion, it's all on setup. I had no problem with the tires, obviously, on the Audi. The Audi be obviously being a little bit slower than the Alpha. But throughout, through the corners and stuff, the Audi definitely has the legs on the Alpha. Um, looking at the Toyota, the Toyota's all around brilliant car to drive, doesn't eat the tires at all. I think the Alphas might be struggling a little bit with tire wear, uh, which is obviously going to make it very interesting going forward. Um, obviously, I'll be running a lot of weight in the next race, which will be in two weeks' time. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the weights are going to play or going to have an effect on the racing. But I, all in all, I think it's going to be brilliant and there's going to be a lot of close racing. Great stuff. Okay, guys, well, that's it for tonight. Um, just want to thank everybody behind the scenes. j Doc running the league himself. Uh, I would have loved to talk to him, but we know he does tend to have some internet problems at times, uh, so we're not going to risk that. Warwick Stewart setting up the, no the, the servers, doing all the crap jobs during the day when I can't. Uh, Charles Randall running around behind the scenes, doing a lot of stuff, then turning up to, to race and moving about his pedals all through the kitchen. Uh, and then Peter Grobler, having if you've seen the cars has custom liveries on them, the guys do them, but they're not always perfect and they have errors, and he would sit hours on hours getting them ready. So thank you to all the admin guys, thank you to the sponsor, and thank you for everyone who is watching this and for supporting us. And we'll see you on Sunday, same time in the first ever, as far as I know, Polo Cup Series that will be taking place on Assetto Corsa on South African tracks. Cheers guys, have a nice one.